Yo, what's going down? AP Gub Peeps. We have the final video for you in our series. This one is an important one. It's important Supreme Court cases to know. Last one in our series, and you are going to be 100% prepared to kill the exam when you take it in May. All right, let's start at the beginning. One of the most important ones Marbury here versus Madison. James and Madison down here from 1803. This dealt with midnight judges from the Adams administration or judges that were appointed at the last minute. Marbury was one of them. The Supreme Court ruled they could not enforce the appointment as the law said the Supreme Court could enforce it. Supreme Court said, hey, that's not our job. That's the executive branch's job. So the importance of this case is that the Supreme Court established judicial review or the ability to declare a law unconstitutional. Know this. I've seen on almost every single gov exam marbury versus madison mccall v maryland from 1819 maryland was taxing a branch of the bank of the united states or the bus as i like to call it or the national bank this is part of henry clay's american system and the bus sued maryland saying you can't do that bro you're not allowed to tax us and the supreme court declared a state cannot tax a federal institution they said the power to tax is the power to kill an institution and the federal government is supreme over states. That's the importance of here. Early on in American history, there were debates. Who really was supreme? Is it the federal government? Is it the states? Well, cases like this helped to force the idea that the federal government is supreme. Gibbons versus I did another John Marshall court case from 1824. This was a case dealing with interstate trade or trade between two or more states. Supreme Court ruled that Congress, not individual states, could control interstate trade. Again, chalk one up victory for the federal government over states. They are supreme yet again. Dred Scott versus Sanford from 1857, generally regarded as one of, if not the worst court cases in U.S. history. Dred Scott, a slave, he sued for his freedom, and the Supreme Court ruled several things. Said one, African Americans, whether they are free or slave, are not citizens. Furthermore, Slaves were deemed property and could not be taken away from their slave owners without due process. And Congress could not legislate slavery in the territories. The Missouri Compromise was unconstitutional. Thankfully, this will be overturned with the 13th and 14th Amendments 8 and 11 years later. Reynolds versus United States dealt with this guy, Mr. Reynolds, from 1879. This banned polygamy or multiple wives. This was from the state of Utah. So the Supreme Court ruled then not all religious practices are protected by the First Amendment. Reynolds was a Mormon and argued that his religion allowed for him to have multiple wives. The Supreme Court said religion does not legalize an otherwise illegal act. So religion cannot legalize an act that the government deems illegal. Plessy versus Ferguson from 1896 is when Homer Plessy challenged Jim Crow laws and Louisiana, those segregation laws. And the Supreme Court said established this separate but equal doctrine, this idea that separate facilities based on race were okay. However, the South is going to focus more on the word separate than they will on equal, as evidenced from this political cartoon. This will later be overturned by Brown versus the Board of Education from 1954. Jump in over to Shank versus the United States in 1919. Shank was a gentleman who spoke out against World War I in the draft, and he was arrested. And the court in the ruling gave a famous doctrine, the Clear and Pre Present Danger Doctrine, written by this dude, Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes. Look at the mustache on that guy, huh? And what this says was that during times of war and crisis, civil liberties or rights decrease. So you can connect this to Lincoln's suspension of habeas corpus during the Civil War. Basically, the clear and present danger test says you are not allowed to scream fire in a theater and induce panic. Free speech is not unlimited. It is not 100% all the time. And this upheld the Espionage Act, which was used to arrest Mr. Shank. Korematsu versus the U.S. from 1944 dealt with Japanese internment during World War II. This upheld the legality of FDR's executive order of Japanese internment. And they were interred due to fear of subversion. But it's important to note that there was no evidence of any people that were interred were ever spying on behalf of the Japanese government against the United States. But the impact, as we just talked about in Shank, is during times of war, your rights go down. During times of war and crisis. Brown versus the Board of Education from 1954, one of the largest, most significant court cases in U.S. history, argued 
and further court by this guy and future Justice Thurgood Marshall. And the Supreme Court declared school segregation unconstitutional, and they used the 14th Amendment to support this, this equal protection under the laws. The impact was this was a milestone in the civil rights movement, and this led to Southern resistance by the South, such as the Southern Manifesto, the Little Rock Nine from Little Rock, Arkansas, and massive resistance or the shutting down of schools rather than desegregating. Matt versus Ohio from 1961, police are going to search Dalry Mapp's house for a suspect, and they found gambling and pornographic material, but they did not have a warrant when they came into her house. So the impact is the incorporation of the exclusionary rule to states. The exclusionary rule was already used for the federal government. Now it's applied to the states. You might ask yourself, what's the exclusionary rule? Well, it states that you can't use illegally obtained evidence in a court. So if the police gather evidence without a search warrant or probable cause, chances are that will be inadmissible in the court. Angle versus Vital dealt with school prayer in public schools. And the Supreme Court declared that school sanctioned prayer was unconstitutional in public schools. And the impact was this reinforced the separation of church and state of the Establishment Clause, part of the First Amendment, which states Congress shall make no law respecting an, an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. It is perfectly legal for you, for an individual to pray in a public school. It just cannot be school-sponsored prayer. Gideon versus Wainwright from 1963. Clarence Gideon was convicted of burglary. He could not afford an attorney, asked for one. State of Florida said, no, we're not giving you one. So the impact is the incorporation of the Sixth Amendment. Remember, applying the Bill of Rights to states. That's what we're talking about with selective incorporation. The Sixth Amendment guarantees a right to an attorney, and this is now applied to states. And this later became part of the Miranda rights. Griswold versus Connecticut from 1965. Here we have Estelle Griswold. She challenged a Connecticut law banning contraception, and the Supreme Court said that this law was unconstitutional, the birth control was legal and the impact very important to know the supreme court's going to argue that a person has a right to privacy even though it's not mentioned in the constitution they're going to hint at this this is very 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 important because it will be used in a later upcoming supreme court decision miranda versus arizona one of the more well-known court cases Ernesto Miranda confessed to kidnapping and rape after a two-hour interrogation, and at no time was he told he could remain silent or his protections under the Fifth Amendment. So what was the impact? Well, we had the corporation of the Fifth Amendment, and suspects must be read their Miranda rights. And here is a government official reading Miranda rights to a suspect. You can see he's reading it from a card, which not only includes the right to remain silent, but also the right to an attorney if one if you cannot afford one. Jumping over to Lemon versus Kurtzman from 1971. The issue here is how could government money to private religious schools be used? In the Supreme Court, again, this deals with the Establishment Clause. Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion. Supreme Court is going to state that aid may not be used to promote religion. However, it could be used for money for textbooks, for example. But So the Supreme Court said aid to private Religious schools is okay as long as that is not used to promote religion. Rover's Way from 1973, one of the more controversial court cases in U.S. history. This legalized abortion and it drew on the right to privacy precedent that was established by Griswold from 1965, eight years earlier. Now, although there can be some restrictions, abortion is legal. An example of a restriction is, is Planned Parenthood versus Casey from 1992 in which the Supreme Court ruled that a 24-hour waiting period before a woman can have an abortion is legal. Also, minors have to let their parents know if they are having an abortion. So there are some restrictions that can be placed on abortion, but abortion remains legal as a result of Roe v. Wade. The Regents of the University of California versus Bach from 1978. The background was that the University of California Davis set aside 16 admission slots for minorities, and they did not have to meet the same standards as other applicants to their school. Bach, who was a white male, he applied and did not get accepted, even though his scores were higher than the minority candidates. So he is going to sue based on discrimination. It will go to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court will say that a quota system cannot be used. In other words, a set number of slots or admissions could not be set aside for candidates based on their race. However, Race could be considered 
as a factor in admission to a school, just not a certain number of slots set aside. New Jersey versus TLO from 1985 deals with the school searching a student after she was caught smoking in the back bathroom and seizing items from her purse, including drug paraphernalia. She sued and said, hey, this violated my Fourth Amendment rights. And the Supreme Court said that the seizure was not a violation of her Fourth Amendment rights. So schools do have some leeway in searching individuals. Texas versus Johnson from 1989 deals with the American flag being burned. Gregory Johnson was sentenced to a year in prison after burning the flag in a protest. When all the way Supreme Court and Justice William Brennan wrote the plurality decision, in the Supreme Court state that flag burning was supported by the First Amendment. You will often hear people saying, let's make an amendment to make flag burning illegal. That is one of only two ways that it will become illegal. That or if the Supreme Court overturns Texas v. Johnson. This is a very, very controversial case. All right, guys, that's it. Look forward to seeing you back here for my final review video, which will cover everything throughout the entire year, everything you need to know to succeed in AP Gov. Thanks for sticking with me for all 50 videos. You guys are champs. I appreciate it. Best of luck. You are always more in the test score. Don't ever forget that. Good luck in May, and have a good day.